ladies and gentlemen. And now it's time for New Zealand's greatest fun show. It's on TV, then it's on now. Seen it on a TV show. It's on TV, then it's on would now. You, would you please give a big warm welcome? Welcome. It's on TV, then it's on now. Seen it on a TV show, ladies and gentlemen. It's meant to be on TV, then it's on now. Well, well, it's really great to have you on the show tonight. It's on TV, then it's on now. Seen it on a TV show. It's on TV, then it's on now. On TV, on a TV. <laughs> Kia Ora New Zealand and welcome to Capital E on TV tonight with your hosts Susie Q and Barbara. In tonight's program we'll hear from the latest from hit Kiwi director Andrew and Addison. Catch up with the tropical celebrity disaster and of course there's up to the minute interviews and reviews. Concluding with a ready a weather report from Lovely Squirt. But first up, what have you got for us, Suzy Q? In local news, Ninja Madness hits Ch Chris Christchurch campus. Canterbury University's hottest new social club. Ninja Sock seems to be having no trouble signing up new members. Ninja Sock, a society for martial arts fan fanatics, boasts a secret headquarters and offers protection to its ever increasing list of members. Ninja Sock president and engineering student Jackie Chan says the club's 250 members are required to dress entirely in black, including a black mask. It also compulsory to purchase a silver and red plastic ninja sword from the $2 shop. Initiation, in, initiation into this prestigious club is not for the faint-hearted potential ninjas are asked to say the bylaws in Japanese before they, became, before they can become official members. Martial arts skills are practiced each session and led by Kung Fu legend Jackie. Well, that certainly is different. Let's cross to our reporter, Mr. Mendoza, who has a ninja sock present in the studio. Thanks, Suzy Q. I'm Mr. Mendoza, and I have Ninjastic President Jackie Chan joining me. Welcome, Mr. Chan. Can you tell the viewers what possessed you to start such a club? Oh, yes, yes. Um, well, I, I, I know people out there, they see the movies, yes. They see movies like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Yes. Um, and they, they see them jumping from building to building and from tree to tree, you know. Oh, yeah. And they, they, I know they want to do that, so I teach them. Thank you. Why is your club's 250 members required to dress entirely in black? Well, um, you know, the ancient ninjutsu assassins, they always they work at night. It's just tradition because it's always dark outside, you know. It's dark and, um, uh, yes, they, they wear black to blend, yes, to blend. Mr. Chan, how long have you been in martial arts? Um, well, my father was a ninjutsu teacher and, um, uh, yes, he teach me since I was very little, so I, I could say all my life, because, um, uh, yes, I, I love ninjutsu. I, I, I study, watch movies, you know. I play with um, uh, my toys, you know. The katana. Katana, yes. Uh, katana, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chan. We hope to see you again. Um, yes. Because you have been interviewing me today, I'd like to make you a temporary member. Oh, let me try this on. All right, back to you, Susie Q, in the studio. Thanks, Mr. Mendoza, and we'll be watching that one with interest. Now it's time for the hottest story of the show. Filming was halted yesterday when near tragedy struck the set of NBC, the celebrity Treasure Island. While filming on location in Rarotonga, show contestants Justin Timberlake and Jessica Simpson were attacked by a rare eating jellyfish known as the Kakapuka. The incident took place during an underwater challenge off the main island. Teams were competing to retrieve weighted bricks from the ocean floor and transfer them to an anchored boat waiting at the surface. Simpson and Timberlake, who were playing for opposing teams, appeared to be the only two of the group of 19 who were attacked by the oversized purple and red sea creatures. 
Witnesses claim a frenzy of screams and thrashing broke out in the water as Simpson was being stung. She was finally rescued by the show host, Chimmy Chang Chang. The, <laughs> the popular show, now in series four, has been temporarily postponed while this tissue is this issue is dealt with. However, illegal footage obtained of the attack can be viewed on certain underground websites. And now we cross live to our foreign correspondent, Rachel, in Rarotonga for an exclusive interview, interview with Jessica Simpson. <laughs> Yes, I am here in Paradise Island, and joining me now is Jessica Simpson. Hi. Yeah, hi, Jessica, and thanks for joining us today. Of course, we all want to know what happened on the day of the attack. Well, like, all the celebrities were supposed to be doing, like, a Water Olympics type thing, and we were swimming in the water like we were supposed to, and everything was going fine. And um, then something came up, and it felt like something bit me, and it, it hurt really bad. Uh, what did it feel like to be stung by the flesh-eating Kapoka jellyfish? It felt like last Tuesday in the mall when I was going shopping to buy this beautiful skirt I'm wearing now. And I stubbed my finger on something, and I, I broke a nail that like hurt really, really bad. So it felt worse than that, which is kind of hard to do. OK. Uh, what did you do after the show host, uh, the show host saved you? Well, I was on the beach, I was screaming and yelling at everyone to call 911 and you things like that. All right. Uh, what did you say the name of the show host was? Ching Ching Chong or something like that, you know, something. All right. Well, thank you so much for, je for joining us, Jessica. And back to you with the news, Barbara. Thanks, Rachel. Wow, that truly is amazing, isn't it, Barbara? Yes, Susie Q, and we wish a speedy recovery to the swollen pair. And now, on to our next bulletin. <laughs> Successful Kiwi director Andrew Adamson of Shrek fame is said to begin the making of the second film in the Narnia series 5, Prince Caspian. The bulk of the film will be shot on the west coast of the South Island, and Adamson would like to use a pred predominantly <laughs> Kiwi crew. The entire cast of children are set to return for the second film, and Anderson says it was just like one big family when making the first film. In Prince Caspian, the four children return to Narnia, where, where 1,000 years have passed. They are required once again to fight off an evil villain, this time a horrible king, set to be played by unlikely choice Johnny Depp. The actor is said to be requesting unreasonable amounts of money, for his appearance on the film and is demanding special privileges such as free bagels and cream cheese. Will's filming on location. Meanwhile, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, which came out before Christmas, is re re reliving its popularity in the DVD market, having been voted in the top 10 DVDs of 2005. Well, best of luck to him. Can't wait to see the next installment, and that brings us to the review section of the show. What have you got for us, Lindley? Thanks, Susie Q. I'm Lindley. Today I'm taking a look at the brand new album from Eminem, Encore. After his hugely successful big screen debut, 8 Mile, Eminem is trying to be himself. No more Slim Shady, no more Marshall Mathers. This, for once, is the real Eminem, or so he would like you to believe. Unfortunately, many are saying his best work is behind him, but that's simply not true. Change it. There, it says it twice. Album cuts Yellow Brick Road, Mockingbird, and Spend Some Time seem to be some of, the, of, his best to, of his best collection to date. The fact remains Eminem will go down as the clever guy, a man who brought hip-hop to the masses, making it an art form, and the best of his album shows an amazing flow and a style that is impossible to copy, though everyone still seems to try. Catch you later. Now over to Suzy Q with the latest weather update. Oh. Mara. <laughs> the latest weather update. Thanks, 
Barbara. Starting in Auckland, there will be light showers. I can't see. There will be light showers and calm seas, great for fishing. Waikato and the Bay of Plenty will have highs, high winds and a low of 12 degrees. Throughout Hawke's Bay, you can expect thunder in 14 before rain sets in. Taranaki <coughs> and the lower North Island are becoming fine with a temperature of 19. Moving down towards Wellington, the capital is expecting a heat wave with a high of 34 degrees. Pleasant and calm in the morning, but with an afternoon tsunami warning, which may, which may just cool things off. Moving south to Nelson and down to the Canterbury region, fine clear skies with, <laughs> with winds gusting to 110 <laughs> kilometers <laughs> in place. <laughs> Keep cats. <laughs> Keep cats inside and tie down the dog. Finally, a low moves over Otago Southland, bringing miserable conditions. <laughs> Rain, hail, sleet, and snow are all expected with strong winds and an icy high of only six degrees. Yikes. Stay off the roads and home. <laughs> And home in bed, I reckon. Back to the news desk with Barbara and Susie Q. Hello there. I'm Patio Furniture, and I'm here going to teach you how, well, not teach you, but I'm going to perform the, the Irish River Dance for you. Yeah. Are you ready? Are you ready? Thank ya. Go. Go. Oh. <laughs> talk, talk. Thanks, Squirt. <laughs> Sounds like down south is not the place to be. Taranaki is my choice for fine weather. That's it for tonight. Live broadcast on this, the 29th day of June 2006. Be sure to stay tuned for more hot news interviews and reviews coming soon. Until then, thank you for all watching, and we hope to see you next time. Your turn. Your turn. <laughs> <laughs> From the whole team here at the Milo Show. Inoha Ra. And good night. <laughs> Now.